Ton Hung is a person, but he has a mirror image of himself on the internet. And this is created by the digital crumbs that he leaves behind him as he spends time online. And your mirror image of you, the virtual you, may know more about you than you do. Because you can't remember what you bought a year ago, your exact location a year ago, what you got on that test a year ago, what diagnosis you had a year ago, what medication you took a year ago, dozens of classes of data that represent your identity. You create your digital identity, but it gets taken away from you. Kind of like the feudal system, where you grew some vegetables and the landlord would take them all away and leave you with a few cabbages. Why should you care? Well, there are five reasons, okay? This will be on the test. Number one, you can't use that data to plan your life. Number two, that data is on central servers, so it's going to be hacked. Number three, that data is very valuable, but you don't make any money off it. Number four, all that data is buried in computer silos, so it can't be linked together for a social purpose, like, say, fighting a pandemic. Health data could not be aggregated to fight a pandemic. And the fifth reason is, this data is your identity, and you're losing your privacy. People say privacy, I don't care, I got nothing to hide. This is a big mistake to think like that. Your data represents your identity, and we need to get our identities back so that we can own them, benefit from them, and manage them responsibly for ourselves and for our family. This is an historic problem and a big opportunity. How are we gonna do that? Blockchain, Web3. It's called a self-sovereign identity that as you transact online, you're in the metaverse, you're generating data, it gets collected into your own sovereign identity that you own and you can take advantage of. I wonder if Korea will be the first country in the world to do this. Here's an opportunity for your president and your prime minister. I hope they're watching. And I hope that as young people, you will care about this issue because it's your generation that will turn this around. Supply chains, 2022. And the president of the United States says one of the biggest challenges facing the country is supply chain failure. Supply chains are very complicated. And you have trains and boats and planes and trucks and all kinds of different partners moving around, communicating with email and fax and paper and traditional computer systems and hundreds of middlemen in the process, transfer agents, escrow agents, you got tax authorities. It looks like a big bowl of Korean noodles, okay? That's what our supply chains look like. And if one little noodle is out of place, the result is today in the United States, mothers cannot get baby formula for their babies. Let's move supply chains onto Web3 or blockchain because you would have a single ledger that would give everyone a picture as to exactly what's happening, where things are, how they're moving, where problems are emerging. A single version of the truth 